everyone. I think I have been sat at my computer for a little bit too long today. So I thought I would come outside to read you a book. Now this book is a bit of a mixture of a fiction book and a non-fiction book. It gives us lots of information. The book is called Tigress. Twigs with whiskers, a tree with a tail, or is it tigress hiding? Tigers are rarely seen, even though they can grow as big as Shetland ponies. The tiger's bright stripes are perfect camouflage in their natural surroundings. She can look exactly like a patch of forest just by being there. When she stalks slowly through leaves and shadows or crouches still in elephant grass, her fiery stripy coat seems to vanish like magic. Bigger than your fist, her pink nose sniffs the air. Her ears turn to listen for the smallest noise. Bright as torches, her yellow eyes gleam all around. Tigers don't have a great sense of smell, but their eyesight is six times better than ours. And they have amazing hearing. She's searching for a new den, somewhere safe for young cubs. Smooth as a river she moves, her plate-sized paws press the ground but don't make a sound. When she runs, strong muscles stretch and ripple her body like wind on water. She finds an untidy pile of rocks across the clearing, full of dark cracks and crevices, perfect hiding for tiny cubs. She will bring them here tonight. Mother tigers look after their cubs all alone. So when the mothers hunt, the cubs are left unprotected. Changing dens helps to fool predators like leopards or wild dogs who may try to attack her cubs. So she has to be quite smart to make sure that the other predators don't know where she is. Back at the old den, the cubs are snuggled deep in shaded sleep. Their bright white ear spots wink out like magic eyes. With rough, wet licks from her long tongue, the tigress stirs them awake. No one knows for sure why tigers have ear spots. They may help small cubs to follow their mother, or perhaps they are flashed as a warning to other tigers. Grooming keeps the fur sleek and clean, but the wriggling cubs are eager to feed. Small as sugar bag, sugar bag at birth, baby tigers drink rich, rich mother's milk and fill up like fat furry cushions. These are two, oh sorry, these two are too small to walk far, so the tigress uses tooth power. The gentle mother carries her dangling cubs one by one to the safety at the new den. Tiger cubs have loose skin on their necks which make them easy to lift up. So it doesn't actually hurt them when she's carrying them in that way. While the tigress hunts for food, brother and sister stalk, stretch and snarl, teeth bared, heads together. This could be a tiger fight. But their knife sharp claws are sheathed this time and don't draw blood. The cubs are six months old now. And when they are older, their claws will cut deep into the hardest wood or the tough hide of their prey. And the hide means an animal's skin. Tigers can get badly hurt in fights, so they usually avoid each other. Tigers find their own territory, which they mark by scratching trees and rocks and by leaving their scent on bushes and leaves, which is very similar to domestic cats. If you have a cat at home, your cat might go outside and do some scratching and they leave little scents from their paws to tell other cats that that's where they have been and to stay away. Sharp grass stems scratch three empty bellies. For days, mother and cubs have chewed old skin and crunched cold bones. The tigress needs to 
to make a kill and now the hungry year old cubs are too big and strong to play hunt by the den. A wild pig's body, bristly head bends and bends as his snout shoves and snuffles for grubs. Fierce eyes burning, noses wrinkling with his smell. The three tigers creep closer with soft, slow steps and crouch still as stone. Young tigers start eating meat at around eight weeks old. They start hunting when they are half grown. So they're ready to try and catch themselves something for dinner. The cubs' whiskers quiver. Their hearts thump loud as drums. Like fire, the roaring tigress leaps and falls in a crush of teeth and muscle and mouths open, her snarling cubs rush in. Tigers are good hunters but even they only catch their prey on average three times out of every ten tries. Tiger cubs always eat first, and if there's not much meat, the mother may not feed at all. Now the family will eat its fill. The sun turns tiger fur oven hot, so after the big feed and asleep, the tigress heads for the lake. While her cubs splash and swim, she floats in cool green water to soak away the heat. Tigers are among the few big cats to enjoy swimming. Between 18 months and three years old, tigers leave their old territory and find new territory of their own. Three sleek tigers prowl the midnight forest. The tigress taught the two cubs all of her tricks. Now at 18 months old, they must find their own homes without her. A pattern of gliding stripes slides into the trees and the mother disappears. Brother, brother nuzzles sister for the last time and walks away. She watches the forest swallow his tail. Then she turns, silently crosses the moonlit clearing and just like her magic mother, the young tigress vanishes. And that is the end of our book. So I thought that one today was a nice choice because there was a tiger in the story of Elmer and we have been talking a lot about elephants but we haven't spoken that much about all of the animals that as well might be living near the Asian and Indian elephants. So thank you for listening to this book. I hope it has taught you a little bit more information about tigers. I thought it was really interesting to learn that at the age of only 18 months, which is one and a half years old, the tiger is ready to go off and find its own home. 